Okay, so what we are going to see today is Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, why? Why we are doing that? So before I show you why and how we do it, let me show you what I have. So I actually, before the session started today, I, I thought, like, why not I give it a try first? So I gave it a try. So I created Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, I use Elastic Beanstalk service to deploy our very favorite Flask API. Okay, and I have used the image, uh, the image which we already had, and I used it to deploy the container directly in my uh, AWS instance of Elastic Beanstalk. How it looks, so if I go inside and I go and click on the link, I get the service up and running on this URL. Okay, so this is exactly the same service which we, uh, we have created earlier. So this is the same one, which is uh, which is whose code is present here. Okay, how did I do it? So let's see how we did it. And I'll while I show you how, I'll also explain whatever comes on the way. It's not it's not really very different than our traditional EC2 instance. Some EC2 instance banate hain, uh, exactly exactly the same. Rather, it is not even a paid service. It actually works on the underlying resource. So underlying resource of any managed service which we have in at AWS is the infrastructure, which is actually the EC2 machine. Uh, as uh, until unless you're using serverless, the so serverless may uh, it's agnostic. Um, you don't have to worry. There are no EC2 instance spinned up when it's serverless. It's separate something different. But whatever other service you are using, they're always underlying resource uh, which will be present. Um, and that's where things run. Why we are using this? Because this is a AWS answer to simplify the deployment and installation of EC2 instance because you see in EC2 instance you have to really do a lot of things right you have to first spin it up which is fine no problem you can spin it up very easily but then you have to do a lot of installations right you have to if you if you have a uh, python application then you have to install python if you have a node application you have to install node uh, server the, if you have whatever dependencies you have you have to run your application you have to first go and install that make sure it runs and then only you'll be able to then you have to do may have to do a lot of other things like auto scaling and um, load balancing and many things you may have to do if you go with the plain vanilla ec2 model but elastic beanstalk simplifies that so i'm i'm at, sorry any questions uh, are they not able to hear you? Uh, is your mic away or something? Suddenly, all of a sudden, you are volume or Arlene, I'm I'm barely able to understand you. Can you speak up? Uh, now, Akash, I'm not able to hear you. Uh, it's like your mic has moved away suddenly. Oh, is it? Uh, can Can you guys hear me? Yes. Now, now it's clear. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me adjust again. Okay. Sorry. Uh, is it better now for everyone? Yes, sir. Better. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. So I'll repeat myself. I'm not sure if you guys heard it. So I, what I was saying is about Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is AWS managed service. It is just a service. That means it doesn't have the resource. The resource is still EC2. EC2 is what? EC2 is the computing power of Amazon. Everything runs on a machine and mach that machine we call in Amazon as EC2. Right. So Elastic Beanstalk is a service which simplifies your application deployment and installation. Because if you go with the pure EC2 way, then you have to do a lot of installations and configuration on your own. But if you do with go with the Elastic Beanstalk service, it's a we call it as a managed service. The concept is a general concept is called as managed service. That means we will manage the things for you. Whatever it whatever is needed to whatever is needed to run your application we will manage it for you you just focus on the application your own application don't worry about the infrastructure right so this is where this managed services comes into picture elastic beanstalk is one of those managed service same is true with the elastic kubernetes service this is also a managed kubernetes service this is what we were talking about earlier so if you you start using this then the aws is responsible for setting up your cluster you don't have to do it on a ec2 instance you just say i want these five machines these four nodes cluster five cpus cluster 10 cpus cluster uh, this is blah 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 give all the configuration and the aws will will configure it with for you and give it to you 
so you don't have to do it this is why this is this is the primary use case of aws or any cloud provider that it automates the infrastructure part for you so that you don't have to worry about the infrastructure and configuration and setup or installations you only have to worry about your business problems so your developer are not wasting time in setting up these things these things are already being set up by us you just manage it and then your developers can work uh, to develop your application your business logic which uh, um, spend time in developing the business uh, functional flows and without having to worry about any any of the installations part so today we are not learning eks elastic kubernetes service we will be surely doing that in some someday maybe next one or two weeks or something but today we are going bit we are taking baby steps so after ec2 we are now uh, the next service we are going to learn in aws is elastic beanstalk um you also see lambda but later but let's just see how elastic beanstalk i have used to deploy my application i just now i have deployed this here i'll show you how you can also do that it's very it's dead simple let me show you so i go here elastic beanstalk and then what i do is i go and create a click on a create environment and here i have an option of web server environment and worker environment i have to choose i have to provide an application name okay so when i say application name uh, here it's quite evident right why i'm saying web server environment because my i want to deploy a http um http web api or any http any any application which runs on http is what i want to say as a web server so i want to create a have a web server something which responds to my request worker environment is something where your workloads run this is mostly for the data processing here and there we are not going there uh, or some task individual task etc maybe jenkins can be configured this way because jenkins has lot of worker nodes which gets created but that's a different use case so we'll not talk about it but let's just say we are going to go and create a web server environment hum web server environment ko banayenge and here we will put a application name so let's say i am calling it as uh can i put some different application do i have anything there okay let's go with the python then i will see the next thing or or oops what did i do okay let me say the flask api itself for now then i will see what key i can do here demo or so i say class because one i have already created so i simply say flask api demo class okay uh, application tags optional i leave it then environment name it is asking me which you have seen earlier in the previous screen it creates for each uh, version of the beanstalk service you will you will have a unique environment information unique environment name and etc it will be created it represents a it represents an environment right if you remember last time i was talking about here in this case right these were environments so dev environment stage environment production environment so environment in this case means a specific dedicated uh, placeholder where you can deploy application for a specific use case so when i said dev it was for development purposes when development of everything works okay it goes to staging staging let's say the qa people are using it there can be multiple environments in traditionally there can be more than 10 environments so application may have to go to different environments for different teams right so here in blastic beanstalk let's say this is how it is let me give a unique a proper name let's say my dev environment let's say i'm using it this way there can be different way you can use this concept but i'm using it for dev production and something like that right so let's say i have already deployed my flask api in the dev let's say that previous one is a dev let's say this one is uh, my flask api sit i'm calling it sit that means system integration test environment sit environment is something which is there uh, being used everywhere you know almost all company will hear that thing a lot it is called a system integration test environment where everything is brought together all the systems are brought together all all the components and they work as a whole so that you can test it test end to end flows so i'm calling this as a sit environment and this is very similar to let's say there's one more environment called as sit environment there's one more environment called as uat environment right and then there can be a uh, qa environment i mean there can be many environments based on different needs there can be a performance environment 
right? They can be any any environments. So let's say this concept which I'm using here, I'm using it as a environment, the way I've explained it here. So dev, QA, SIT stage, UAT, and eventually production. So I'm saying this is an SIT environment. Then domain, I will leave it as it is. It will give it. Otherwise, if you already have a domain, then you put it here. Now this is where the magic is. The platform. Platform means what you want to run. Okay. So if I'm saying managed platform, I have to select what is it which I want to run because each application, which we application, write it. It can be in different languages, isn't it? It can be Java, Go, PHP, Python, Ruby, whatever it is. Now, when you write these applications, these applications need to have a runtime. कोई भी application जब हम लिखते हैं, उसका एक पीछे एक runtime concept होता है. Runtime मतलब something which can run it. If I am writing a Java code and I have compiled it into a .jar file, that means I need to have a JVM. JVM java virtual machine it's called and that is the runtime for java application php ke liye bhi runtime hota hai python ke liye bhi runtime hota hai sabka runtime hota hai and then the same way docker ka bhi runtime hota hai right so docker ki image can on, can only run on a machine where we have a docker runtime so docker runtime jab aap docker desktop ko install karte ho to docker desktop also comes with docker runtime and then if you are if you are using kubernetes then kubernetes also by default has docker runtime now you want to install this on ec2 instance if you remember humne ec2 instance pe run kiya tha last time we were deploying this on our ec2 instance which is this one right we are connecting and deploying it here why it was able to run it it was able to run there because i already installed docker runtime on that i installed docker that means i have installed docker runtime same way if i am doing this on elastic beanstalk that means i have to tell elastic beanstalk service that i want to run a docker container by the way i can directly run python so agar main python directly run karunga aur mera application bhi python application hi hai right this application which i have is oh not this one uh kahan gayi app.py right so this is my python application i can just do one thing where i just say python platform and main is pure itni code ko upload kar dunga wahan pe and if i do that then it will be able to run it as a python code but i am not doing that because i am want to run it as a docker container so i will rather select here docker okay and then something here but let's not worry too much about it there is something on ecs ecs is elastic container service i may also end up teaching you that later but for now let's skip it uh, i think uh, so that i remember I'm so sorry. I think I think I should note it down. Otherwise, I will forget. So, if time permits, then I will also do Elastic Container Service. This part, okay? So, I I have put that here so that I remember it later. Um, why it's not coming here? I ah ah no, it's not coming here. Fine. Anyway, uh, I'll do it that later. But Elastic Container Service, also called as ECS, is another way how you can run Docker Container. It's an AWS answer to Kubernetes. Let's just say that. So AWS uh, also has its own way of running container, and they they call it Elastic Container Service, which is actually quite good. I've used it. Bit costly, but still okay. Uh, anyway, so I will be using Docker running here. Uh, see, I when I tell you things, I tell you a lot of. bits and pieces here and there so don't get confused by that i'm not sure if you guys are getting confused a lot when i mix up lot of things uh, but i just say it for the sake of explaining some giving you some more information here from here and there but if you're not getting it fine forget it focus on what i am talking about i am talking about elastic beanstalk i have given environment i have given the name and the platform platform selection i have done here as docker then the application code to agar yahan par docker select mein nahi karta to main yahan par kuch aur likhta sample application ko upload karta i can upload my code here like this uh, guys please give me a minute okay so now the next part is the application code which is what you want to run right so upload karna padega aapko apka code um, where is my code my code is here in the app.py this is where my code is but i don't don't want to run it like this uh, if i want to run it like this then i would have to go here change the platform as python but i don't want to do that i want to run in my docker image and docker image uh, has this benefit which is agar maine docker image banayi so that docker image can run anywhere if it is running on my machine that means it can then run on any machine 
Akash, you're not clearly audible. Arlene is saying I'm not audible. Uh, is it the same for everyone? Uh, no, audible, sir. audible properly. Okay. Okay, Arlene, I think it's your side. Okay, everyone confirms, right? Uh, can anyone one more time, once more, once more, can confirm if uh, you are able to hear me properly? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yes. Good. Thanks. So Okay, thanks. So app.py is what my application code is. Agar maine yehi code I am giving to someone else, that means it may not run. Because mere paas, it may happen that I, my system configuration, my OS configuration has something which that other person doesn't have. And so this will have this concept or thing called as doesn't work on my machine or does work on my machine. Which is like it's working here, but it's not working on your machine. Uh, which has also happened with uh, abhi bhi aisa hi hota hai na main aapko bata do code likha hai isko run karo aap kehte ho nahi mere pe nahi chal raha why that happens because there can be different dependencies to run that code and once you use docker that that thing that problem goes away completely because if i create a docker image and if i able to run a docker image on my machine that means that docker image will run everywhere and that is how docker make things safer in terms of deployments so I, if I'm saying I have a Docker image which runs on my machine, that means it will also run equally the same way on Elastic Beanstalk. So that's why I'm using Docker and I don't want to use here Python or anything uh, because I'm not sure if it would work or not work and it would create unnecessary problems for me later. So I'm saying Docker and that's it. And then here I'm saying upload your code. So I'm getting two options, upload, upload your code or sample application. So here I don't have a sample application. I don't want to sample application. I want to say upload your code, but here I don't want to upload my code. I want to upload my Docker version, but I don't see that option very evident here, right? So how that works is uh, you tell this information on what Docker image to run to Elastic Beanstalk using a file. How Elastic Beanstalk ko kaise batayenge ki mujhe kaun sa Docker container run karna hai? There are actually two ways which Elastic Beanstalk has. One is it has its own syntax and in that syntax file dot json file you can provide the name of the docker image or you can mention the path or you can mention the file or upload the file uh, which is of the format docker compose so i think there was a time when someone was asking docker compose a lot so this is one of the valid use case of docker compose so docker compose i'll show you example of that very quickly there is another application which is Docker, Doctor Everywhere Reference App, very similar to Practo, appointment booking system. Here there is a file called as Docker Compose.yml. I created this file so that I can run it on my machine for testing. If I have three services run, then I will I will place it there. I will place all the services in the same location, which is this, and then and and can then run it so that I validate whether all these things, three things work together. Right, so this was the primary objective. I can try doing that here, or maybe I can run this also, but okay, let's not make things complicated. Okay, so Docker Compose is one way of how I can run my application on local as well as on Elastic Beanstalk. So Elastic Beanstalk per bhi my Docker file ko, Docker Compose file ko run kar sakta hon. I can actually show you that documentation quickly. Elastic Beanstalk uh, Docker Compose. Uh, so whenever you don't know how to do certain things, always refer the official documentation. So official documentation will always have the right information on how to do things. Okay, so if I go and see here, do I have that Docker configuration dot zip file? Okay secrets manager so this is a one way of doing it docker run aws json file which actually looks something like this or can i show you a better version of this let me see something like that huh? so it has all the information of how you will do so this is how you will uh, go and 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 uh, place it there so you will say this is the aws json file where you mention what image you want to run what port uh, volume, logging, entry point command, everything you can mention from here. One way is this. Second way, if you don't want to do it this way, then you can use the Docker Compose way of doing it. 
okay so what did i run let me show you that very quickly uh there it go studio okay so this is the file actually i placed there okay what is a i think everyone know so far what is docker compose right docker compose is, has a very very simple syntax you have a version at the top then you say services and under services you define the service name so service name is what my docker image so mere paas is case mein mere paas for example teen docker images hain image 1 image 2 image 3 एक इमेज है पेशेंट की एक इमेज है डॉक्टर एपीआई की एक इमेज है अपॉइंटमेंट्स एपीआई की सो हाउ डिड आई कॉन्फ़िगर इट आई सेट अपॉइंटमेंट्स नेम ऑफ द नेम ऑफ द सर्विस देन आई प्रोवाइडेड द नेम ऑफ द इमेज एंड हियर इट्स मैंडेटरी दैट यू मेंशन दिस बिकॉज दिस रिप्रेजेंट्स द रजिस्ट्री डॉक्टर रजिस्ट्री दुनिया की सारी इमेज डॉक्टर हब पे नहीं है बाय द वे हाँ सो दिस ऑल समाइम्स पीपल हुआ लर्निंग इट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम हैव दिस कन्फ्यूजन डॉकर रजिस्ट्री आर डिफरेंट देर आर कैन बी गूगल की अलग है डब्ल्यू एस की अलग है सबकी अलग डॉकर रजिस्ट्रीज होती हैं यू कैन हैवर ओन डॉकर रजिस्ट्री इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एंड द इमेज कैन बी प्लेस्ड एनी वेयर सो आई हैव टू आई हैशन द इमेज नेम द टैग नेम द अकाउंट और द रेपोजिटरी नेम एंड देन द रजिस्ट्री नेम सो एक्चुअली द अदर वे अराउंड रजिस्ट्री नेम रेपोजिटरी नेम इमेज नेम एंड द टैग so i do have to mention the whole thing image and then i can mention few more things like environment port kaun se port kis se map hoga network agar mujhe mention karna hai to volume mention karna hai to so lot of things are there which you can mention but we will keep it simple so i am only saying appointment image and then the port and that is what i am trying to say uh, in this case in this case kahan khula hai bhai I have so many windows. Uh, I think this one. So this is where it is. So all I am saying, if I want to run only one image, which is my Flask API version one, and I am saying I want to run this on port eighty, and I want to route the traffic to five thousand. Okay. So this is what I am saying here. Port eighty eighty. This is very similar to जो आप लोग Docker में करते हो. अगर Docker Compose समय में नहीं आ रहा है, so it's very simple. You say Docker run hyphen it. ऐसा करते हो, right? And then you say then you say hyphen port port is a 85000 and then oops and then you mention the name of the image right so when you write it in a command line you do this but when you want to write it as a file you do it like this okay so it's very 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 similar to what you do here but instead of let's say agar aapko multiple files run if you want to run multiple images you have to run this command again and again 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 and again 5 10 10 times multiple times because applications actual real applications are complicated they are, they can have multiple components now to avoid doing that you mention this configuration in a bigger file like this that's the only thing so each statement here represents docker run in some way so instead of writing docker run like this you run like this you write like this this is another docker run this is another docker run and they are all connected together right they are all connected together uh, on different ports using the service name okay uh, i'll go back here again now this is the file i want to place this is a file this is a description of my application that i want to run this application as a docker image and with the these ports so i'll go back again and i will uh go to my elastic bean stock again and here i need to somehow upload this file so i can use an s3 url i can place this code into s3 bucket and from there i'll place the url it will fetch it from there or i can upload this file directly okay so just to summarize there are two ways you can mention it one way is using elastic bean stock version uh, way of doing it so aisa main likhunga to bhi chalega i can upload it if uploaded like this image ki jagah main wo likh dunga update mein true kar dunga container mein 5000 kar dunga i can do all those things directly from here and upload this file instead of doing that what's easier and understandable is that you may mention it in the docker compose file which is more standard way of doing it okay so i will go here choose file and i will upload this file uploaded fine then here you can mention because see internally elastic beanstalk doesn't have anything of its own internally it will launch a ec2 instance you would won't have to do it 
it will do it for you automatically. So then I can provide something, single instance, spot instance, high variability, body machine CA, choti machine CA, on demand CA, depending on your use case, I'm using free tier here, okay? So I'll say free tier, application label, okay? So I have to say, consa version, I'm saying version two, for example, okay? I'm saying next. Then it will ask me for the same things which it asks you when you create EC2 instance, except some service roles. Uh, I already have created the service role. Service role here means your EC2 instance, hai, sorry, um, your Elastic Beanstalk you have here is a managed service, right? Now your managed service has to have this power of spinning up EC2 instance. हम इलास्टिक बीन स्टॉक को कह रहे हैं कि आप हमारे लिए EC2 इंस्टेंस क्रिएट करो सो इलास्टिक बीन स्टॉक विल नॉट एबल टू डू इट ऑटोमेटिकली इट विल हैव टू बी गिवन अ परमिशन राइट सर्विस एक्सेस हियर सेज व्हाट आई एम रोल्स अज्यूम्ड बाय इलास्टिक बीन स्टॉक एज अ सर्विस रोल एंड EC2 इंस्टेंस प्रोफाइल अलाउ इलास्टिक बीन स्टॉक टू क्रिएट अ मैनेजर एनवायरमेंट बोथ द एम रोल एंड इंस्टेंस प्रोफाइल must be attached to IAM managed policy that contain the required permission सो IAM समथिंग वी हैव नॉट गॉन थ्रू इन इन दीस सेशंस I think there is so much, so many things to do, but uh, let's see if we can do a short, short session on IAM. But IAM here means Identity Access Management. Okay. In AWS, everything is a service. Everything is, a, let's say it's an entity, a service. And one service, if one service wants to create another service, that service has to have a permission from you. So, you have to give permission to you. Then, you have to create it. All these things are in the IAM place. In AWS, we create it there. So, roles, access, tokens, all those things, identity, all those things are managed in the IAM. So, here, you have to ask this. The service access. We can go through it later, but if I go through it now, we will end up spending more time i think we don't have more time i think i think we more have now 20 more minutes or so but anyway so this is what you have to do here uh mostly it's there but if not there then if not done it before any Akash, service sorry never... for interrupted you yeah Akash, sir yes, says yes. post the class we start only while i please end the meeting one two minutes oh ah okay okay i see okay then i'll do that thanks um okay so guys i have to i think stop it uh, but let me very quickly uh, complete this part at least the end till end so maybe explain it around all you have to do is to keep jumping quickly from these places if if you don't see anything in the drop down then you go to create and then you um, create your own it will create things for you automatically but if not then select it from here then the key pair i already have a key pair right i've created so many before so i just select this one uh, instance profile the same way. If it's not there, it will create it for you. Click on next. Okay, here you have to select your VPC. I go and select my VPC. Then you have to select your subnets. Uh, your subnets are availability zone, which I explained to you last time, right? Uh, which is here. This is my availability zones, right? Uh, I want to have one instance here and then the one here. These are avail availability zones and their subnets and their uh networking cider uh, numbers there uh, i will explain that maybe later because we don't have enough time today let me quickly select one and b and then database i don't have i don't need at the moment i click on next okay uh then i come here i don't have to again worry about the settings instances these are automatically by default this is a security group i have to provide i select this this security group is what i explained here if you remember the security group which i was explaining was this one which you also need for anything this means you have to have set up some rules firewalls ip address ports etc that configuration is set, is done there i am selecting this which i have already created and i think i'll quickly go next here it's saying instance type i'm saying micro or small whatever works uh here some monitoring settings it's asking i will not touch it uh let's be keep it as it is quickly do the next and i think that's it and then you click on submit i hope it works uh, yeah it has created uh, if i go to my environments i have one environment which was this one which i originally created and now i have this one 
So this will end up creating a new container, something similar to what you see here. So this is what I showed you last time. This is the domain I have. My Flask API is up and running here. Okay, so since we have less time, we have to stop the session. Uh, let me quickly summarize. We learned Elastic Beanstalk today. This is what we are going to be using for deployment of the application using the continuous deployment uh, pipeline in GitLab. So in GitLab, if you see, we used, uh, uh, what did we use? We used the SSH way of deploying it to our EC2 instance, right? We did uh, this way, but we will not be using it anymore. We will be using the Elastic Beanstalk now. We will replace these statements Elastic Beans, with, with Elastic Beanstalk statements. And then our application will be deployed directly to Elastic Beanstalk. Okay. Other than that, in the coming sessions, we will also see if we can also add more, more uh, um, stages because we want to have more stages like container scanning and all those things as a part of the pipeline itself, which we don't have. And Flask API is not we will be using. We will be jumping to the Java-based API, which I was showing you last time, which is uh, my Spring Boot API. This is what, if you remember, we were working on. Uh, where we have a Docker file and then we, we used it for our uh, sonar scanning, which is this one. So, um, and this is what we will be using. So we will be now jumping to this application and we will learn things from here. And also the last part, Kubernetes is what also we will try to start in the next, uh, next Saturday or Sunday session. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you have any scope of question and answer. If you have any, please paste it on the WhatsApp and I'll answer. Okay, maybe one last question. Anyone has anything to say? Okay, I don't think so. Thanks, thanks then, everyone. Uh, see you next uh, Saturday then. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.